Welcome to a help presentation for the latest lab, the Weight on a Bench Lab. What I'd like to do is I'll just go ahead and redraw the extended free body diagram for the situation that you see, uh, the one that we used in our lab. Um, what, we, what we said was we wanted to draw a free body diagram, but we want to draw it with the forces at the locations where they actually are. This is The reason for this, of course, is because what we want to do is we want to take into account uh, the distances that these objects have from, let's say, our reference point. So in this case right here, we use the example of x for our distance that the uh, weight is away from the left-hand support, and then d as the total distance here between the two forces. Now, in this portion of the lab right here, it actually asks you to calculate specific numbers associated with this. So in other words, you had to solve for F2, and you had to solve for a specific answer with F2. But what I want to concentrate on is the fact that we can do this for a, a general situation. Solve, in this case, what I'll do is I'll solve for F2 in a generic format. Um, and I'll let you, uh, you should have done this for the lab, but, um, but, but, uh, you can uh, check your own work against what I do for F2 to make sure it coordinates with uh, the equation that you come up with for F1. But the way it looks like is something like this. If I choose the left hand, uh, the location of the left hand support as a reference point, then that force does not apply a torque to the beam at that location because the distance away, the distance between the force and the reference point is zero. But the weight, of course, does apply a torque, kind of in this direction. Remember, we use this as a, our positive direction, or counterclockwise as positive. And so what that means, of course, is, is that we could write an equation here now for the sum of the torques around our reference point. And the first term is going to be the force mg located x distance away, and it'll cause a negative torque. Now, the, there's two terms here because this right here, uh, force F2 from that support, acts to balance the torques. And so we have another term, which will be a positive torque, F2 times the distance away from my reference point, which is D. And all of those torques have to add up to zero. This allows us now to write a general form for F2, not just a specific answer, but a general answer for all values for F2, and that would be mgx over d. And this is one of the equations you should have come up with for the general form for solving for uh, F2. Now, why is this useful to us? Well, it's useful when we get to the analysis portion of the lab, and that's what I want to uh, use this as an example to talk about. When you get to the analysis, the analysis asks you specifically, besides just graphing your data, it specifically asks you to find the mathematical and plot them on the graph. These are, this is a required portion of the uh, lab. And what that means is, is on this next page here, you're going to have, uh, in this case, you're going to have your data plotted. So maybe you have, I'll, I'll say, just I'll just do the F2 data. Maybe you had some kind of data that looked like this. Your data is going to obviously vary based on your points. And you maybe have done a best fit line, uh, maybe something like this through your data. Hopefully you used a straight edge. Okay, so, but this is, that, that is only one portion of what you're asked to do. The other thing that you're asked to do is also graph the mathematical model that would match your prediction for what F2 should be for different positions. And for that, of course, what you're going to use is you're going to use the, um, the model is what we just came up with, which was that, um, uh, that equation for F2. And our equation for F2 was F2 was equal to mgx over d. Now, to turn this into a mathematical model that we can do here, what we need to do is we need to turn it into the equation for a line. And in this case right here, you can see that this is a linear function. So it's going to have some kind of a form of y equals mx plus b. And that's what we're looking for. And so now this is going back a couple of weeks, but you'll need, this is, gives us a chance to re, uh, refresh our memory of how to do this. In creating a mathematical model, what we do is we look for what is there a thing in our equation that is graphed on the y-axis? Well, that happens to be F2. So these two quantities 
and essentially map one to another. Those two things are related. That's the y part of our line equation. Uh, then we can ask ourselves, just going across, what is the um, horizontal axis? Well, in fact, the horizontal axis, of course, in our equation for the line is just x. And in our equation, it's also x. Now, it's just a uh, happenstance that those two happen to be x's. Remember, that value could be anything. It could be time. It could be some other quantity, force and you know, stretch of a, of a spring or something. In this case, they both happen to be x. The key here, though, is not that they're the same letter. It's they're the same. They're they're gra that is those two things are graphed along the horizontal axis, and so what this means is this now. This is where it gets to be interesting. It means that the thing that maps to the slope for our linear function is the thing, whatever it happens to be, that's multiplied to our x term, and that is all of this. All of that right there is essentially the, what's going to be the slope for our model. We do not have a b term, so you can kind of see this is a proportional function because the b term is actually equal to zero. And so what the lab is asking you to do now is to um, plot a line on your graph that is not your best fit line, but is your model for the data. And the way you'll do that is you'll plot a line that has an intercept of zero and has a slope that is the mass that you chose times 9.81. In other words, our best accurate guess at uh, gravitational acceleration uh, at our lab location, divided by d, which is the distance between your support points. So that it all, everything has to do with the things that you chose for your actual lab. And that should give you some sort of a line. Now maybe say you get a line that looks like this, and now that allows you to compare the model of what you'd expect mathematically for the situation with your actual data. And you should have some kind of commentary on how those two things compare to each other. You need to have this for both at your F2, which I've done for you, which should help you along quite a bit. But you're going to have to do the same thing for F1, and it's obviously going to be a different equation because it's a different, uh, different line. And hopefully that'll get you through the uh, analysis portion of the lab. Please email me if you have any difficulties. Uh, I think all of the groups got every a piece of information that they needed, but if you need some sort of piece of information or a data set to be able to use because your, your data is not working for you, make sure you contact me before the lab is due, uh, Tuesday night, midnight, uh, through digital submission. Thanks for checking in.